begin to heat a food above 118 degrees Fahrenheit, the enzyme begins to denature. That's why raw fruits and raw vegetables are actually healthier than steamed vegetables. Steamed fruits and vegetables are better than cooked vegetables. The more heat that is added, the more it is cooked, the more the enzymes are denatured. Drugs also serve to denature food enzymes in food. So if you are on a lot of medication, you are inactivating the nutritious foods that you do take in. Alcohol is something else that denatures enzymes from food that you take in. Fluoride in the city water denatures enzymes. Free radicals denature enzymes. Food processing by definition denatures enzymes. Canning. So in the 60-day program, there, is, there are no canned foods. Not only are enzymes denatured in the canning process, but one of the substances that they use in the lining of cans so the food doesn't stick to it, neurotoxin phenol. So avoid canned foods during the 60-day program. Now remember I talked about form follows function. An enzyme is, is a long chain protein that has been wrapped and configured into a certain specific shape. It is held in this certain specific shape by means of hydrogen bonds. They're like little rubber bands that hold it in this shape. Now the enzyme has to retain that certain shape in order to, so it will fit into its binding site. So what denaturization is, when you heat it or when you do some of these other effects, it clips, it clips the hydrogen bonds. It clips those little rubber band attachments so that the enzyme will relax back to its original long chain protein shape. What is the effect? Now it is a foreign protein in your body. What is the effect of foreign protein in the body? Immune response. Exactly. Inflammation, the inflammatory response, the immune response. So by taking in denatured enzyme, this is why these foods are reactive and inflammatory. They used to have active, uh, nutritive, whole food enzymes. Now they have denatured enzymes. Denatured enzymes are foreign proteins in the body triggering the autoimmune inflammatory response. Foods that cannot ripen. Okay, that's great. We have bananas here. I get to explain this. These are fairly natural foods, natural bananas. You see the, they're, green, they're green at the end. They're, they're, they're picked a little bit green. And then as the enzymes in the food, that is part of the natural ripening process. And if you leave this on the windowsill, after a few more days, the green will go away and become lighter. And there'll be more and more brown spots on this banana, right? That is part of the natural ripening process. Now, don't you notice that there are so many foods in Safeway, even in Whole Foods today, where bananas, for example, are really, really green. They're really, really green. And you'll take them home as they ripen, they will rot before they ripen. Wow, when is it going to turn yellow so that I can eat it? Finally, you open it up and you'll see that it's still partly green, but now it's rotted inside. This is the effect of ethylene gas and radiation. The foods cannot ripen because the enzymes were denatured by either gas or irradiation, and they use that to transport foods a long way transport foods a long way. So I see this sometimes even with uh, uh, organic produce. In Bangkok, sometimes you'll go into a grocery store in Bangkok and you'll see Driscoll's blueberries from Salinas. You know, how did that happen? You know, ethylene gas and irradiation. <laughs> and, and they're like $10 for a little tin that big too, right? With, with bananas, you know, look for the brown spots. The brown spots, that's natural ripening, and that's, a, that's an indication that uh, less radiation and, and less gas has been used to inhibit, uh, interfere with the ripening process. So in general, but, but that's just always a good rule of thumb, to buy the produce as close as you can to, to local. Strawberries. Strawberries is another really 
uh, obvious alteration of, of, of a natural food. You know, I just came back from Paris, and in all the little grocery stores in Paris, they, they have what strawberries used to look like. Strawberries are little. They're like this, remember? And they're really red, right? And when you cut them in half, it's really red all the way through, and they're juicy. Now, these giant strawberries, again, you go down to Pajaro, S Salinas, all those wild places down there, uh, Pruntucky, and you know, you'll, you'll drive beside the side of the road, and they'll be, they'll be like f fruit stands, right? And you'll go, oh wow, I I'll buy some fruits directly from the farmers. Eh. These guys are not the farmers, okay? These are the huge corporate thousand acre fields, you know, and it's the same hybridized GM whatever altered foods. I talked to some of these Mexican guys, one of the strawberry places one time, and, and, and I go, why, why are these strawberries so big? And they go, oh, those are the new strawberries, the new strawberries. And that's what we have in America now. We have strawberries that are the size of apples, right? And when you take a knife and you cut those strawberries in half, what do you see? You may say yellow at the top of the strawberry, yellow at the bottom of the strawberry, and it hasn't quite ripened yet. So you put it on the, on the windowsill so it can ripen and be all the way red. But then the problem is, it, it might turn brown, it might start rotting before it ripens. They rot before they ripen, and then you cut the strawberry in half, and it's not red all the way through, it's white on the inside, it's white and pulpy. So that strawberry cannot ripen, it's going to rot before it ripens. This is the effect of hybridization, ethylene gas, and radiation. This, this is one reason why it's worthwhile to go to Europe, because you, you're going to see uh, fruits that are, are like they used to be in America. Apples, when you buy apples, just because you bought it at Whole Foods doesn't mean they have any particular food value. Just because it says organic doesn't mean it has any particular food value. My opinion is that most apples, even in, in Safeway, even in Whole Foods today, most apples are, when you bite into it, it's a white pulpy substance reminiscent of apples. This has to do with lack of minerals in the topsoil. I mean, when, when you travel, when you, when you go to someplace far away that hasn't been influenced by 30 years, of, 30 years of Roundup and 30 years of NPK soil alteration, and you bite into that apple and it, it suddenly, you know, you're a kid again and you're like, I remember this from my grandmother's farm back when I was a kid. That's what an apple tastes like. We, you know, especially young, young people today in America, they have no idea what I'm talking about when I say that. Esophageal reflux. We all know what esophageal reflux is, or GERD, right? That's when you start eating and you already feel full. Or you lie down at night and you roll over and the food comes up. Okay, you feel full because you are full. Eating foods like this or that quart of haagen you just ate that has no enzymes in it, you know, along with the two bags of Doritos, right? These foods are not recognized by human digestive enzymes. We have not evolved an enzyme that recognizes hamburger helper or Doritos barbecue chips. So as a consequence, these indigestible foods, they accumulate in our stomach, and your stomach is almost full when you eat the next food, and then the cardiac sphincter down at the bottom of your esophagus, yeah, as you swallow, it opens up to deposit that new food that you just chewed up and swallowed, and then some of the stomach acids that are in attempting to digest all that indigestible sludge that is sitting there in your stomach, some of that splashes up against the delicate mucosa of the cardiac sphincter of the distal esophagus, causing a pain that we, we, we call, colloquially, we call it heartburn. heartburn, but it has nothing to do with your heart. That is reflux esophagitis. And then eventually, after years of this, the distal esophagus becomes scarred, becomes scarred. This leads to a syndrome known as? Barrett's. Yeah, that's right, Barrett's syndrome. Barrett's syndrome. And then if you leave that go for another decade or so, 
esophageal cancer is one, is one of the top 10 cancers, right? So esophageal cancer didn't happen overnight. It happened after years of eating foods that could not be digested in the stomach, and this is the whole sequence of events as it takes place. Now the good news with esophageal reflux is we're going to talk about the enzyme program. The enzymes, you only have to, you take three capsules of enzymes three times a day for 60 days. That's it. And when you start doing that, you are adding back the enzymes that have been removed by food, food processing. The good news is that it doesn't take 60 days to resolve reflux. It usually only takes two weeks. And people, you know, they've been doing Prilosec, they've been doing Tums and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, that, this, this, you know, this is medical thinking. This is uh, allopathic thinking, right? The stomach acids cause pain, so let's get, do away with the stomach acids, right? But the stomach acids were the only way that we, you're going to metabolize and break up that stuck debris that you've been shoving down your throat, you know, for the last two years, right? And so, yeah, the pain will go away, but the problem remains. So that's, th that's their idea of curing people and solving a problem. I saw this t-shirt in Paris. The more I weigh, the harder I am to kidnap. <laughs> Dr. Stan Bynum took the knowledge that he had learned from being the president of National Enzyme Company and then founded his own company in Phoenix back in the day, right? And he, he said that he wanted a, a full spectrum enzyme. What does that mean? to di digest fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, uh, but he, w he was going to add to his enzyme a delivery system. Now, you probably re remember from school that all enzymes re require vitamin and mineral cofactors in order for the enzymes to actually have that activity. Right, Dr. Terrence? And so he put, he put the, the, the needed uh, mineral and, and vitamin cofactors in his enzymes. I mean, that's the level of sophistication this guy was. And that's why I'm going to show you some of these uh, bioterrain analysis tests, these blood tests, and that's why we get the uh, action that we get in 30 minutes. You, you don't have to believe that his enzymes work. You can observe it right before your eyes. And then the other concept that Bynum introduced to us was the concept of bioavailability. So he used to say, it doesn't matter what you eat, it doesn't matter what supplements you take, the only thing that matters is, is what is finally taken up at the cellular level. What is taken up at the cellular level. Most supplements do not even enter the bloodstream at all. They are not even digested or broken down. They go right through the system and are passed out. These enzymes were designed like alcohol and aspirin to be if you have an empty stomach, they can enter the bloodstream directly through the stomach. This is how they are effective in clearing out the debris in the blood. And then if you take these enzymes on a full stomach, they are then dragged through the entire digestive tract to clear out the tract. Bioavailability. So he used that concept to evaluate supplements as well as nutrient foods. The concept of bioavailability. Whatever just goes through you and cannot, cannot be absorbed has no bioavailability. The objective, the agenda of an enzyme program for 60 days is to clear the tract and to clear the blood. All of these concepts here are explained completely in our chapter, Enzymes, the Key to Longevity at the Doctor Within. 80% of the American public has an 80% processed food diet. So in the 60-day program, we are going to, this is the hardest thing, to eliminate processed foods from our diet just for 60 days, just for 60 days. Now my contention is that everybody over the age of 40, even if you are, have, are in perfect health, you have tons of energy, uh, and you never get sick, my opinion is that you should still do a detox at, at this point after 40 years because of the bioaccumulation of toxins in the air, the food, and the water. 
Now, if you are over 40 and you have some kind of chronic condition, you, 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 are, you are tired, you have some kind of chronic arthritic weird headaches that don't respond to a ton of drugs, you know, in these, in these situations, y you need to do a detox program in order to recalibrate your entire body, clear the tract and clear the blood. So this new religion of biotech, uh, I, I can do a whole uh, four-hour section on this, but we don't have time to do that. So, but I just want to uh, introduce the idea. Th the real expert in this area is Jeffrey Smith, of course. Two excellent books. If you don't read anything else, you can read my 30-page introduction to this area in a chapter on my website. It's called Introduction to GM Foods. And it's a summary not only of his work, but of the other major works. But if you haven't studied this area a little bit, you have no idea what has gone on in the world since 1996. You, you, you have no idea. You know, all this happened since 1996. And the first crop that was GM was what? Corn. No. Oh, no, it soybeans. It was soybeans. It was potatoes, no, it was soybeans. It started in 1996. There were no GM foods before 1996. And this was Monsanto. And in less than five years, they went from no soybeans genetically modified in the United States to 100% GM. Jeffrey Smith, in, his, in both of his books, he's going to tell you four crops genetically modified in the United States today, and, and they are corn, cotton, canola, and soybeans. Remember I talked about those, the, the strawberries that are gigantic looking like apples and they're a huge bizarre, bizarre shape? Those really aren't genetically modified. Those are hybrid. And he, he'll tell, talk about the difference between that. This whole area, they pretend like it's global overpopulation and we're doing this to increase the yield per acre you know and this is this ostensible agenda you know for the emergence of the biotech industry in the last 20 years that's not it at all this is a for-profit adventure for one reason and one reason only to increase the value to the shareholders of these global corporations that's that's their only that's their only agenda and he will show you how crop yield per acre is actually decreasing. We've already hit the limits with GM crops. It's already going down. Monsanto knew, knew that this whole idea of genetic modification of seeds, of crops and plants, it, it has a finite, it's like a fuse, timeline, exactly, timeline, it's finite. And eventually we're, we're going to have to press the reset button. You know, you know this whole thing about Roundup, and soybeans and, the, and uh, how the farmers have to sign the Monsanto contracts and buy the seeds, buy the seeds from Monsanto every year, sign, sign those contracts. And, lot, and then in the South America, all the, all the farmers are like killing themselves, the suicide rate, and it's a very dark story, but every time you eat this stuff, you're supporting that, you know? The majority of soybeans produced in this country are not showing up in sushi restaurants as edamame, right? The vast majority of soybeans produced in this country are used to produce what? Soybean. No. Soybean oil. Yes. Hydrogenated soybean oil, which is the primary component of all the processed foods in the world, not just in the United States. This is a global business. You see this in Europe. You see this in Asia. You see this in, in Africa. You see it everywhere. Okay, so we need a substance that came from a food that is no longer a food that can infiltrate other trashy ingredients and be sold as food with very little nutrient value. Okay, now this is Udo Erasmus. This is a technical book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill. You're really going to understand hydrogenation if you look at this. I summarize this book in my chapter called introduction to genetically modified foods on my website anyways he talks about the eight step process to convert soybeans to hydrogenated soybean oil so i'm going to go through this really fast cooking pressing solvent extraction degumming adding sodium hydroxide which is the same thing as drano that's what drano is sodium hydroxide bleaching deodorizing 
and hydrogenation. The final step is hydrogenation. They take the final product and they, they force air through it through a, an aluminum catalyst for six hours. That's the final step of producing hydrogenated soybean oil, at which time that oil can be used to make paint or linoleum, very stable products, industrial degreasers. This is the same exact soybean oil that they're using as the base for all these processed foods. So it's horrifying when you, when you read fats that heal, fats that kill. Yeah, and so, you know, we talk about the exponential incidence of what disease of old people? Alzheimer's. Yeah, which is dir directly related to what metal? Aluminum. Yeah, so I mean, th that's another primary cause for that. Okay, here's a little experiment. I actually did this experiment. So I'm out at the stables, right? Beaujolais, right? And um, I saw this bag of rolled gold pretzels. It was under a tree right? And it was open, right? And I'm like brushing Beaujolais, saddling him, you know. So I, I didn't think anything of it. Put Beaujolais away, went home. I came back one week later, you know, and I'm out there, just got done. Uh, I was saddling Beaujolais. Beaujolais is a horse, right? Got that, right? I didn't have any breakfast. I didn't have any lunch. It was four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was absolutely starving. So I walked over there and I go, damn, I'm really hungry. So I go, I wonder if these are still good. If it's open on the ground for a week. And so I picked up one of those roll pretzels and I, I bite it. And it's like, wow, they're still good. <laughs> so how is that? I mean, it tastes it like perfect. But here's the main point. Now, a lot of people would say, ew, that, how, that's dirty. It's got bugs in it. No, that's not true. No self-respecting bug will go anywhere near that hydrogenated oil. So it's like, it's like inert. It, you know, it has like a shelf life of like 200 years or something. So we should put it in a time capsule, send it out to space. You know, Cheetos, this is, you know, um, the American public in the 2000s. We talk about breads, you know, I always talk about this thing about bread. You know, you go to Paris, you, you see the baguettes, you know, and the baguettes are delicious in there. That, that's what Colette says in Ratatouille, you know, the, the girl in the kitchen, she goes, this is how you see the good breads, it's by the sound. This, you cra it crackles, and you, you can only do that in Paris. You can't go into the baguette, that stupid Paris baguette store, now they have the strip malls, or in Safeway they have fringe bread and the baguettes, you go squish, squish, squish. That's oil, it's loaded with oil. They don't do that, they don't do that in Paris. So anyways, like, okay, so I'm talking about bread. So, you know, you, you go into Safeway, you, you buy 100% whole wheat bread, organic, 100% organic whole wheat bread. Oh, wow, this is going to be really healthy. And you take it home, and then accidentally you leave it out, and it gets stuck behind the toaster or something for two weeks. And then you go, damn, I forgot about this. And then you reach your hand in there, and it's still soft and nice and fr fresh. That's not fresh. That's hydrogenated soybean oil. That's what it does. It's, it's the texture. So it's the, the illusion of freshness. The illusion of freshness. I mean, these guys came to play. These guys are sophisticated. They are masters of this. California black bread, marble rye, our daily bread. Yeah, and is, of course, is the Ezekiel breads, yeah, they're, all those are fine. So that's all I'm going to say about the enzyme program. The enzymes is really the basis of the detox program. Three enzyme capsules, three times a day for 60 days. On an empty stomach, they go into the bloodstream and detox all that debris in your blood that we're going to see here. And on a full stomach, they'll be dragged through the digestive tract and add back the enzymes that have been removed by food processing.